Ocean Liner community is a small group of people. I know this because I spend a lot of time around sailors and people who are interested in history, even some amateur historians, and I've yet to meet anyone who I would describe as an Ocean Liner enthusiast. Some people I meet are interested in Titanic or have a personal or family story about a particular ship, but that's about it. So naturally, there's a common question in this community. How did you become interested in ocean liners? That's the purpose of this video, to answer the question of how I first got into ocean liner history. Not that anybody asked, but I am hoping to use this video as an opportunity to hear from the Great Big Move community as to how you became interested in ocean liners. Let's get on with it then. Unfortunately, my story, if you can call it that, isn't exactly compelling. In fact, the catalyst for me is probably the same as for many of you. When I was a young kid, probably too young, I was allowed to watch the movie Titanic. Now that I think about it, I'm not sure why, since I wasn't allowed to watch any other rated R movie at the time, and I didn't really express any interest in doing so. Anyway, I was allowed to watch it, and I was hooked. How does someone get hooked on a three and a half hour movie? Well, I watched it again, and again, and again, and again. Of course, the middle part with the dinners and the social commentary and the forbidden love was all pretty boring to me, but I usually didn't skip it because I wanted to get the full experience and the build-up to the good stuff. No, not that good stuff. Now, I do credit James Cameron and his team for putting together a movie with lots of great visuals, sounds, and sometimes dialogue. You wanna walk a little faster through that valley there? He sought to really capture the essence of what it would have been like to be on Titanic, and from several different perspectives. And I think he not only got it more or less right, but also welcomed you into that time and place with open arms. I can't say for sure exactly which parts of the movie brought me in, but scenes with Jack Dawson and his third class companions, sweeping shots of the beautiful Titanic in her natural element, and the exciting action of events like the effort to avoid the iceberg, would probably have been the most alluring to a seven year old me. So, like I said, I do give the movie and its creators credit for being so effective and inviting. But I also think I was predisposed towards an interest in transportation, but especially ships. The Titanic movie just triggered it. I was lucky enough to grow up in an environment where this sort of interest was encouraged. I grew up in New England in a family with plenty of sailors and even more history buffs. So I had plenty of books and VHS documentaries about Titanic and other ships available to me. But I still wasn't an ocean liner enthusiast. I knew practically nothing about them, and I wasn't even yet seeking out information to a high degree. It wasn't until I was almost in high school when I went on a cruise with my family that my interest was fully engaged. Believe it or not, I actually didn't want to go on this cruise. I had never been on one, and the idea of being stuck on a ship in the heat of the Caribbean on Christmas, no less, wasn't appealing to me. Remember, I'm from New England, and I don't like the heat to begin with, let alone on Christmas. But anyway, I didn't have a choice, and so a few days before Christmas of 2006, I boarded Celebrity Cruise's ship, Millennium. My attitude towards the trip changed immediately. I was with my cousins and extended family, some of whom I saw less than once a year, and it was a lot of fun. But more relevant to this video, the ship had me in awe. The size was hard to wrap my head around, which contributed to my getting lost on board a couple of times. My cousins and I had walkie-talkies and ran around the ship, playing hide-and-seek and other games we invented. We were probably a nightmare to some of the older passengers who were just trying to have a relaxing Christmas on this somewhat high-end cruise. But I don't really care. What do you expect to happen when you give a bunch of kids free reign on a cruise ship? I would sometimes explore the ship on my own when there was some downtime, and I probably took more pictures of the actual ship while we were in port than anyone else on board. When we got back home, my life was a little different. Not only did I step up my interest in Titanic and other ocean liners, spending hours on a school night reading up on them online instead of getting a good night's sleep, but I had a new career aspiration. At the age of 12, I wanted more than anything to one day become the captain of a cruise ship. I even did a presentation about it at school when I had to present about what I wanted to do when I grew up. Actually, now that I think about it, any time there is an option to choose a topic for a paper or research project, I always, and I mean always, chose to write about ships. Some of my teachers probably caught on, but they never gave me a hard time about it. Actually, one 8th grade English teacher in particular was very encouraging of it, and I really do appreciate that in hindsight. Anyway, I wanted to be a cruise ship captain. It was the only thing I wanted to do. I was a little disillusioned by the fact that I would never be an ocean liner captain, 
But it was not just the ship itself and the adventure of crossing the Atlantic or some other ocean that compelled me. In my mind, the captain was a strong, charismatic, though stoic, leader who had a lot of lives in his hands, but always got the passengers and his crew safely to their destination. It was about as noble a profession as I could think of. I was really driven by all of this, for a while. But high school is a difficult time for most of us, and a time of chaotic change. I wouldn't say that I lost my interest in becoming a captain of a cruise ship, but circumstances and priorities did change. Today, I'm obviously not a cruise ship captain. I have known that I wouldn't be for quite some time. There was a time when I was aiming to become a commercial pilot instead, but for different reasons, I decided not to go down that path either. I continued to learn about ships and maritime, because it's just what I did. But I went to college, got a degree, and a standard issue job. These were all active decisions, and I don't regret a thing. I have a very good life. But I did still have an itch which needed to be addressed. I needed to do something with ships, whether I consciously knew it or not. Reading about them wasn't quite enough. So a little over a year ago, I started the great big move. I never expected it to take off. It was just a personal project that I felt I needed to do. And I have always enjoyed making videos, so why not use YouTube as a platform? But here we are a year later, and nearly 50,000 people have joined me. I never thought that was possible. I have explored topics that I didn't even know were topics, and I'm only getting started. The list of video topics I want to research is long, and I plan to get through it all, and I hope that those of you who remain interested stick with me. I'm learning a lot, and I hope you are too. Ultimately, that's the point. To not only keep the era of ocean liners alive, but to grow interest in it, despite its assignment to history. I will continue to learn about ships and spend time on the water. For now, I will continue to research ocean liners and produce ocean liner content. And maybe one day, my interest in maritime history will manifest itself in a different way. But I'm now old enough to know that it will never disappear. As some of you know, The Great Big Move recently started a Facebook group for the community called The Great Big Move Officers Club. The goal of the group is to bring the community together in one place where open discussion is easy to facilitate. YouTube is great for a lot of things, but collaboration isn't really one of them. So if you're interested in interacting with the Great Big Move community, I encourage you to join the Great Big Move Officers Club on Facebook. I engage with the members through my account, Dutchley Whitaker, and I hope to see you over there. Thank you for watching. Oh, and don't forget to share your story of how you became an ocean liner enthusiast in the comments below.